what is up you guys my name is Justine if you guys are new here and today I went to Walmart and maybe spent a little bit too much money um, on seeds um, but I want to go through all the things that I got oh and I have the receipt to tell you what each and everything costs on this bench by the way I got this bench at an auction for two dollars and so this was the biggest deal of the day or not the day this was the biggest deal uh, here in this video <laughs> okay so the first thing I got was some miracle grow um, potting mix now this is not what I usually use I really really like the pro mix moisture control um, I don't have actually I do have a small bag of it over there um, but it was not enough to start my seeds and they didn't have it in stock um, at my Walmart I don't have a super center I just have a small Walmart I'm in a small town and uh, this is what they had and if you guys have watched any of my other videos I have said before I'm a very relaxed gardener I do try to I actually I do not use I do not use any pesticides or herbicides or anything like that on my garden I don't fertilize with anything chemically such as miracle Grow. Um, I try to keep everything off the only thing I really use is like neem oil if I need to and um, diatomaceous earth as well for like squash bugs and stuff but most everything else in my garden I hand pick off or really just let nature take its course if it lives it lives so this is not my ideal thing to start seeds in but this was there it was ten dollars it was nine ninety six I think and it this was my option so this is what I got the next thing I got is a 72 cell seed starting pro hex kit now I have never been a huge fan of these um, and that's because a lot of new gardeners beginner gardeners they will start their seed in this and then think that they can leave their seedling in this until they transplant it out and that's truly just not the case this small little cell here is not going to be big enough to allow the roots to grow big enough to support this you know your seedling until it goes out so the the main reason I got this this was 562 I believe this was 597 actually um, and I got this because I have one heat mat right now I have my uh, herbs on it and I wanted to be able to carry just one tray in and out of my house until these germinated and especially uh, once they do germinate I wanted to make them easily to transport so I do have pots and such that I start my seedlings in these are the containers I got this year off of Amazon I'll link those down below so if you're interested in those uh, they're easy to access and this is what I'll start like my tomatoes in and I've started you know some of my other things in that but I'm gonna be starting a lot of peppers and I just wanted them to be super easy to transport while we're not heating the greenhouse okay the next thing I ran into that I could not resist was some strawberry plants oh yeah I'm gonna be knocking a lot of this stuff off of here um, so these are the Quinault and they are ever bearing so I had the choice between a June bearing and an ever bearing um, this is an ever bearing strawberry which means it kind of blooms all through the summer and maybe in the heat of the summer you know it might dwindle out a little bit but then pick back up in the fall where June bearing is they don't maybe necessarily they don't come to fruition in June I mean probably around that time but it just means that they give you all of the strawberries all at one time so think about ever bearing you know ever through the summer or June bearing in just one short amount of time they're gonna give you and that, that's really good for like people who want to make a bunch of jam a bunch or you know a can can the strawberries or freeze a bunch of strawberries at one time a production that is like selling strawberries to harvest them all and then ship them off and you know that's their their, their time I got the ever bearing uh, because we want to come out and just be able to snack on them I have a two-year-old and she will absolutely love just coming out to snack on them and it's going to be just great so this was three dollars and 24 cents and it has 10 roots in it and if you guys know anything about strawberries um, they will send off runners like the mother plant will send off runners and they will go everywhere you can literally grow a whole strawberry patch off of three strawberry roots like you don't eat a lot they they go crazy so we are gonna try to find or maybe build a strawberry patch somewhere in this little backyard of ours 
Okay, the next two things I got were onions. And I just really, maybe I got gypped on this. Um, I haven't, they actually, they don't have any onion sets yet at my local feed store. That's usually where I get them. Um, I think they get them sometime in March and today is, today is February 22nd. So I got yellow onion sets and I got a package of purple onion sets. They are $3.24 and you guys, they have a hundred bulbs in them. Now, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, um, I, I actually also have some onions from seed that are started. I like to grow and start onions from seed. I feel like they, you get a bigger bulb when you do that. And they also think that they're only in their first year. So they store longer. If you're growing from a set, these are actually onions that were harvested super early and then sold to us as an onion set, which is an un essentially an onion start. But this is actually in its second year. So it can go to bolt faster, which means it will send its flower up. That is fine. It's not a huge deal if you're going to use them pretty quickly in the kitchen. These onions do not store long term. Uh, they will kind of start to rot in the middle. If you've ever got an onion from a store and you like see the green in the very, very middle or it starts to go bad in the middle, that's probably an onion that was grown from a set possibly um, and they just don't store as long. But by, yet yeah, last year I did not buy any sets. I only did the onions that I started from seed and I didn't have a great, I don't know if I did, I don't know if they didn't take, I don't remember if my chickens got in them and pluck them out, I don't remember, but I did go ahead and get onion sets because having an onion that's not going to store very well where I can just chop it up and throw it in the freezer, that's better than not having an onion at all. And we use a ton of onions, so 300 onion bulbs right here. We're going to be doing a video on planting those and it'll be a, you know, we're going to be planting 300 onion sets. So stay tuned for that video as well. Okay, the next thing I got is really not necessarily gardening related, I guess, but uh, these are little popsicle sticks and I got these for extra plant tags. I don't, I've heard that popsicle sticks, they fade, like really not fade, but the marker on them can kind of like get wet and then, just, you know. What am I trying to say? Get smeary, like where you can't read it, so it's not readable. Um, but I picked these up because they were a dollar. Oh, hold on, I got my receipt. These were 97 cents and they were handy, so I grabbed them. I couldn't find any plant tags, so that we got those. <sighs> then I got all these seeds. I'm gonna wait to go through the seeds in just a second. That's gonna take just a little bit longer. Uh, if you guys wanna stick, stick with me through that. And then I've got, I did go ahead and grab these Sharpies. These are the fine ballpoint and they're going to be really good to write on my tags. And it's also really good to have in the greenhouse. I get tied up so many times needing a marker or something in here. And I only have one and it's in one little seed pouch that I have and I don't have any more. So, and here's just regular Sharpies. And I'm just going to stick these in like a little pot um, sitting around here. And that's going to be my pin stock out here. And then last but not least besides in the seed category is a little notebook and the reason I got this is because in years past I have wrote down what day I've started my seeds how many I've started um, so on and so forth and it's a really good way to just and I love taking pictures and videos as well on my phone but this is a really good way to just truly just open it up instead of having to search through your phone and just be able to like okay last year I started my peppers on February 22nd okay so you know, did that work for me? Did I like how big they were? Did I like how small they were? Should I have started them sooner or later? Um, and then I also like to keep notes in here like so-and-so wants five jalapeno plants or something like that. Okay, the next thing, this might take just a hair longer, um, but I'm gonna fold my receipt up. And I'm gonna start with the flowers because that's what's sitting right in front of me and I'm just gonna run through them pretty briefly. So the first thing we have is the Petite Marigold. They take 10 to 14 days to germinate. You need to plant them about a quarter of an inch deep. You need to plant them about three to eight inches apart. They get six to eight inches in height and they bloom in 45 to 60 days. Marigolds are really, really good 
uh, pest control crops. A lot of people who try to organic garden really like to put marigolds all in their garden everywhere. And truly, I have been doing this pretty much since I started gardening, so I really am not sure. Last year, I didn't have very many marigolds. Um, but marigolds, they are supposed to help keep pests away and beneficial insects around. So there you go. The next one is moss rose or rose moss, I've heard it called. Ochilaca mixed colors. This is like a very succulenty type of plant um, and it kind of, it doesn't get real tall. It just really spreads out on the ground. In my experience, it doesn't need a ton of water. It can really live in very dry conditions and it gives off these gorgeous pink or yellow or red uh, blooms. They are absolutely stunning. They're a very low maintenance um, annual. And they also reseed themselves very easily. They only get four to six inches tall and they take about 60 to 90 days to bloom. The next one I got that I seen was the Alaska Daisy. Now these are a perennial. So last year was probably my first year um, to ever really start perennial flowers. And you guys, let me tell you, I think I'll always start my perennial flower. Like, Obviously, I'll buy them as well, but I really, really like starting them. And two of the perennials that I started last year make, made me want to keep starting them was the Shasta Daisy. The, it's the dwarf, Silver Dwarf Princess, I believe. Silver Dwarf Princess Shasta Daisy, I believe is what it's called. It doesn't get really tall, but they just really got to big mounds last year and looked beautiful. A couple of them put off some blooms, but they take 300 days to bloom. Um, but they come back every year. They're already starting to come through and they, they really just made me want to keep doing my own perennials. The other one was snow and summer and I haven't got to see that one bloom yet. It's supposed to take, I think over 300 days. So hopefully we'll get to see that one. But the, the foliage of that plant is absolutely beautiful, especially when it starts to get cooler in the fall. It has like this silvery, just vibrant green, beautiful color to it. So these Shasta daisies are the Alaska Shasta daisies. They're not the dwarf. And I, they actually get about 24 to 30 inches tall. It takes them 180 to 300 days to bloom. I'm super excited for these and I can't wait to see them in the landscape this year. The next seed packet I got, and there's a lot of seeds in here that I can feel, but this, this is, holy. That happened in another video too. That wind is fierce. Okay, this is the Calendula Dwarf Fiesta Blend. Um, they only get about 8 to 12 inches tall, space them about 10 inches apart, and they bloom in about 70 days. So Calendula is really good for salves. You've probably heard of like Calendula, calendula Lotion or Calendula Salve or something like that. I have never grown this, um, but I have always like been told, don't ever not have Calendula, calendula in your garden. So um, I'm very excited to try the Calendula this year. The next seed packet I got was the Johnny Jump Ups. Now these are like, oh, this is called Johnny Jump Up Helen Mount. And I'm going to read you the description. Johnny Jump Up are gorgeous, miniature pansy-like flowers, blooms in a pleasing combination of lavender, violet, and canary yellow. You need to sow them indoors about 10 weeks before the last frost. They need 75 to 85 days to bloom, plant them about 6 inches apart, and they only get 6 to 10 inches high. Now, these Johnny Jump Ups um, I have bought just like at my nursery. And I don't remember, I think last year they may have been like $24 a flat and really that's not bad. Like I'm pretty sure I bought some, <laughs> but I wanted to try to get the seeds just to start them and see, you know, what, what it was about starting them. Our next one is Hollyhock. This is the Chatters Double. And if you see these beautiful double flowers on there, I love flowers that have double blooms. I feel like they are absolutely gorgeous. They remind me almost of a peony or just, they're just beautiful to me. These do get five to six foot tall. So you're going to need to stake them in the landscape if you have them in a really windy area because they will kind of topple over. Space them about 18 to 24 inches apart. And these are um, it doesn't say perennial, but it says blooms every year. And I do believe that is because hollyhocks spread like wildfire and they will drop their seeds um, everywhere around them. If you've ever planted zinnias, zinnias are kind of the same way. So be careful about planting certain plants like this. If you live like, you know, in a lot of land and you don't, you have hay fields and don't want, you know, a ton of flowers being spread everywhere. Um, just like zinnias sounds like this is kind of the same way. The next one is the Delphinium. This is the Emerald Pacific. 
48 inches tall and 100 to 120 days to bloom. So I feel like we definitely will be getting these started here pretty soon. This is the alyssum and last year I grew some alyssum that I just bought in like four packs at the nursery and oh my goodness I loved the way they looked and I've been seeing a lot of garden tours where the alyssum it just like fills out and it's everywhere and I don't remember if I've heard someone say that these will actually reseed themselves really easily too. We'll have to look that up and see but the I'll read the description. This is the pastel carpet. It produces lush carpets of small pink, lavender, and cream blossoms. They are lovely planted in rock gardens, borders, or containers. The plants spread to 10 inches, and they don't get very tall. They only get three to five inches tall. So if you can imagine a carpet, you know, like it looks like a rug. If you've ever seen creeping flocks or something like that, that is kind of like what it is. Um, and you can actually just sow these right into the ground. It says, sow seeds in open ground well exposed. Uh, and it only takes them 49 to 84 days to bloom, you guys. So super, super excited about these and I absolutely love the color palette. The next one is one of my favorite flowers ever and it's the nasturtium. This is the peach melba. I have grown this one before. It's absolutely gorgeous. It can, hand, it can handle a little bit of cooler weather. So this is one that will get um, started pretty quickly, probably about six weeks before our estimated last frost. I think we have almost about 10 weeks right now um, until our last frost. This is going to be a little bit too, these will be huge if I start them now, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, these only take seven to 14 days to germinate. They need a quarter of an inch deep. Space them about eight inches apart and they get about 12 to 18 inches high and they need 32 to 40 days to bloom. These are also edible. Some of these other ones may be edible. I don't, may not know about it, uh, but nasturtiums are edible. Their flowers are edible and their leaves are edible. And they just have a way totally different look of anything else that you put in the garden. They have these really pretty circular leaves that just, they look like a little lily pad. They're just beautiful. I love the way they look. And so I like to chop up the leaves to put in salads, but tell me you have company coming over, okay? And you go pick a lot of these beautiful flowers and put all in your salad. Some people might think that's weird because it's a flower, but it's completely edible. And like, it just, it just, it's so pretty. It makes your garden pretty, makes your salad pretty. So we gotta grow them. This is the, a sunflower and it's a magic roundabout sunflower. Um, this one gets six foot tall, needs seven to 14 days to germinate, uh, half of an inch deep, plant 18 inches apart. They get six foot tall, need 75 to 90 days to bloom. And this one is another one that we will direct sow and we will go ahead and start probably about six weeks before our last frost date. And the dwarf teddy bear sunflower. I loved these last year. I want to do them a little bit differently this year and put them in a container. Um, I will pop a picture up on the screen if I have this a picture of this one in the garden. Uh, it only takes 10 to 14 days to germinate. Plant an inch deep, 16 inches apart. They only get three feet tall, you guys. So they're a super different kind of sunflower, obviously, but uh, they do need 75 to 90 days to bloom. These would be really good in the sh you know having them in the front of some flowers or some vegetables. But in my experience, oh, they actually, they're not just one stemmed. They actually produce a ton of blooms on multiple different stems, which why I thought was really awesome. In my experience last year, they were a one and done thing. Hi. Hi. Look who came to see us. <laughs> but these were a one and done thing. Um, they, hi. Once the flower was done blooming, they were just done blooming. So I pulled them out about mid-season. Bye-bye. Okay, this is the Autumn Beauty Sunflower, and these are absolutely beautiful. I've grown these probably for four years. When I tell you, they they bloom all different colors, dark reds, um, yellows, all on one stem. They have multiple stems. They're absolutely beautiful. They reseeded in my garden last year, and I let them, and they were absolutely stunning and gorgeous. We're gonna have sunflowers everywhere this year. I'm so excited for you guys to see it. And then I got the moonshine flower. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, uh, this one gets four to six foot tall, and that is very true. Like I had a picture um, I used as my thumbnail one time, and I was trying to take this sunflower down because it was the end of the season. And I mean, it was in my raised beds, which are like already to my thigh, because I'm only five foot, 
five foot and a quarter. But the sunflower was like massive. It, I mean, it was like, it was huge. So it stood over me. It's, it's my husband is six two, and it stood over him a lot. So if that tells you anything. And then we've got the moonshine sunflower. This um, only gets four foot tall. So shorter than me. Wow. Uh, days to bloom 75 to 90 and 18 to 24 inches uh, away from each other. And these, the blooms are fashionable lemon yellow color that is unique. Plant with other varieties to provide an array of colors. Easy to grow. And for you beginner gardeners, even for a not beginner gardener, truly, sunflowers are the way to get sunflowers and zinnias like you can just throw the seed out in the garden and you're going to get blooms okay that's all the flowers okay and here is the vegetables let me organize these really quick hold please okay i'm ready all right, so the first one we're going to go through is the bean packets I got. Um, I got the Cherokee Wax Yellow Bush. Last year was the first year I grew this, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I did. I get I got two packages of these because, I mean, I just really liked them, and I don't think, I think I planted all of them last year, and I wanted more. They were super productive for me. The next one I got is the Royal Burgundy Bush Bean. I've never tried this one before. Super excited to try. It's a superior stringless round pod, purple potted bush variety. Pods are smooth and straight. The bush habit is more erect, so it kind of grows more upward. And pods turn green when cooked, which I don't care about that at all. Um, but they're super interesting. So we're going to grow those. This is the Cherokee Wax again. And then... If you guys have been watching my videos, my previous garden tours, I have grown the Chinese red noodle bean for quite a few years. So I've grown the Chinese red noodle beans, but I've never grown the yard long green noodle beans. And I seen these at Walmart and they were $1.96. They are called asparagus bean and they're a yard long. They look exactly like the red one, but they're green obviously. It 80 days to harvest. You need to pay, space them about 30 inches apart. Um, one to one and a half inches deep when planting and 15 to 21 days to germinate. Now these are going to need a trellis to climb up. Um, if you have seen some of my recent videos, uh, I say that because I was just showing like the archway into my garden. Um, the arches on a, uh, the arch is made out of a cattle panel. Now I know that some of you may see cattle panels like sold or like arches for your garden. Now I know that you guys might see like arch archways or like if you go to um, a big box store such as Lowe's or Home Depot, you will see that they have like garden arches for sale. And I wanna tell you to beware. Maybe if they're on sale, you might be able to get a deal. But most of the time, if you're in the garden section, these trellises are going to be a lot more money than ones that you could go to a feed store, like a local feed store, like an Orschlands or like a tractor supply even, and ask for a cattle panel or a hog panel and kind of price those at the, you can get them like six to eight feet long and they are way cheaper than buying them at a garden, in a garden section. So that's a tip. Mine are used out of cattle panels. That's what I trellis all my tomatoes on because you can, you know, if they're six to eight feet long, that's six to eight feet of tomatoes you can put on them. Um, I put them in my garden for arches to plant melons on, to plant beans on, to plant cucumbers on. I also want to answer a question about bean seeds and or any kind of seed that needs soaked. And the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because I just read on the back of here and it said soak your seeds overnight in warm water. And I want to tell you that that is just fine to do. Um, Obviously, it says it on the seed packet, right? Uh, but I have never, ever soaked my seeds. My best friend, Taylor, has never not soaked Mommy, her seeds. Mommy, under my seat. Oh my goodness. She has never not Wait, soaked her oh. seeds. So basically, what I have always done is when I, basically what it does, it just helps speed up germination and helps soften the outside of that, soften the outside of that um, hard seed shell. But I, if I, well, not if, since I don't um, soak my bean seeds, when you plant them out in the garden, just make sure that you keep them very well watered the first, you know, 
couple of days until they germinate. Keeping them while water is essentially like soaking them because they're moist the entire time. And that just gave me a really, really good idea. I think this year we're gonna do a video and we're gonna soak some and we're not gonna soak some and we're gonna see what does better so that way we know and we can be more productive because um, you know, getting them out in the garden, if it, if it helps to soak them overnight and you get them germinated two days before, beans grow pretty fast. So I think that we should do that. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, our next stack, I'm gonna save those. Ooh, okay, this isn't really a stack, but this is the Icicle White Radish, and I, 28 days to harvest, you guys. This is a great, any kind of radish really is great to do with kids because it's such a fast growing process, um, and these are white, like, how could you not wanna try these? If you're not a huge fan of radishes, um, chopping them up very small, putting them on salads, or chopping them up very fine and small and putting them on tacos, slice them up or quarter them, put some olive oil on them, salt and pepper, throw them in the oven and roast them. And it truly changes the game. They taste more like a potato than a radish. They don't have the spicy taste to them. And also, I really wanna address this because here where I live, I live around a lot of gardeners and even older gardeners. And I have been told, I have tried to grow radishes for years and they are just like spicy and pithy and they don't taste very good. And I always ask, what time of year are you growing them? And when they say in the summertime, I say, there's your answer. Radishes actually like to be grown in the cooler weather. The cooler they are just like peas or any of our cool weather crops. If you try to grow them in the summer, they're, not, they're gonna lose their flavor or taste bitter or be spicy or like radishes, like they have that very spicy. I have, they actually can tolerate a, a light frost. So, that being said, try a radish, like roast it, try that too, but try a radish when it's grown in the right time. Pick it out of the garden, wash it, and eat it fresh, and tell me what you think. Tell me how much more of a mild flavor you get than if you're growing it in the heat of the summer, and let me know how it goes for you. Okay, the next thing I got was the okra, and this is the rainbow mix. The reason I got this rainbow mix is because, well, I've never grown it before. 55 to 70 days to harvest. Um, and what baby? There's a bird outside? Yeah, you Oh my goodness. And I have never grown the rainbow mix, so I thought that that would be a super cool thing to do. Now, I do want to tell you that on a lot of back on a lot of seed okra packages or on things that you read online, they will tell you to like nick the seed itself because it has a very very hard core on it and again this is kind of like with soaking the beans I have never um, done that with an okra seed I've never done that with any any seed honestly and I've never had a problem with germination so it's not necessary but it may give you faster germination when it's really warm outside and you sow an okra seed it's gonna it's gonna come up within a couple of days and just again keep them very moist but I have never uh, had to you know nick or put a hole or you know like not even not put a hole it's it basically says take a file and like chip the seed like to kind of make a I don't even know how to explain it I guess but that's not necessary you can do that but it's not necessary just wanted to get that out of the way okay our next one is the black seeded Simpson lettuce I absolutely love this lettuce it's a soft green type I cannot stand iceberg lettuce it is Something about the crunch to it, something about the taste, I just, I can't do it. And that's why, honestly, I don't order salads at a lot of places because I can't stand the iceberg lettuce. Uh, but this is the most popular loose leaf lettuce for home gardens everywhere. Its frilled, crumpled leaves are attractive, crisp, tender, and appetizing. This cool weather vegetable is a vigorous grower, high, high in vitamins A and B. And you can sow this one. I actually, when I did my mini greenhouse um, video, I showed how I sow my lettuce seeds and it's the MI Gardener. I call it the MI Gardener way. I'm sure a lot of people sow that way or you know whatnot, but you literally just do a little trench in the soil and you sprinkle the seeds as close together as they want to be or as they fall out of the packet. And then the the idea in doing that is you get a really nice lush of green uh, in one row and there's no like sporadic, you know, seed seeds that have germinated and the the 
the ones that grow faster will push up and the ones that are smaller will just stay below and kind of they kind of it's survival of the fittest really so that's a really great way to sew it it's beautiful and i love it and we're going to be sewing these really soon in the garden the next one i got was the summer squash this is the white scallop i'm kicking myself in the butt for not Mommy, watch I? Mommy, watch I oh good cat? job oh, wait, watch I? yeah you want me to draw a cat yeah. okay. no, no, draw, 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 baby boo. you want me to draw bitsy boo yeah <laughs> okay there <laughs> I'm kicking myself in the butt for not saving seeds out of these. I think I have. I had plenty of plants to use. This has uh, really grown to be one of my favorite squashes in the garden. Um, you basically use it just like a yellow squash or a zucchini. You just kind of cut it up in a different way because it's a different shape. So I like to quarter mine up, throw them in a pan, saute them, and you can literally put them in with anything. Like I had a couple of these and I think I was making spaghetti one night and I chopped them up stuck them in the spaghetti i mean like once they were you know a little bit softer um and that's just a way to kind of get you know and use up some of your squash we also like would bake them with cheese on top and eat it for a side i mean these are super versatile they're just like a zucchini or a squash and just give you something uh to eat you know as a side in your garden also very very productive um these only take 50 days to harvest so again like a green bean not very long at all okay Peppers are really growing to be something that I love to grow in the summer. I never was really excited about peppers, but my family loves them. They like the hot ones. They like hot salsa, so I have to grow a pepper that is very hot to... Like, jalapenos are not hot enough for them, so <laughs> they, they like hot. I don't, so I'll just stick with the sweet ones. This is the California Wonder. I have the seed packet, but I did want to make sure I had plenty of bells because I want a lot of bell peppers this year. I'm going to chop them up, put them in the freezer, vacuum seal them, um, make tons of salsa, and just have them um, on hand for fresh eating as well. This is the Chinese Giant Pepper, and this is also a sweet pepper. Um, it honestly looks just like a bell pepper, and that's okay with me, as, you know, as long as I'm getting something like a bell. Now, this is red, but... Most of the time, like the California Wonders, you'll see green and red on them. And the red is just one that you've let go a little bit longer on the plant. Thank you. Bye, Mommy. You're so sweet. This is the sweet red Marconi pepper, and I have wanted to try this one for quite a while. I'm super, super stoked about this one. I know that some people cut them in half and put them in the oven and, like, blister them a little bit. Or, like, blister them in a pan and then roast them either way it's a sweet pepper I want to try it I love coming out and just like picking the banana peppers and eating them another one of my favorite peppers I know sorry I'm like getting off track here but is the corbachi sweet that pepper is the one that stole my heart and like really made me want to grow more sweet peppers because if you let this pepper ripen on the vine and it turns this deep red color and I got the seeds from Baker Creek I'm gonna be growing them this year but it is the most I mean it it like doesn't even remind me of a pepper I mean it just tastes so good it's so good so anyway that's I'm excited to try these peppers this is a sweet keystone giant pepper this doesn't say these packets don't say a whole lot about um, what these are it just says it's a mild pepper with no heat and 72 to 80 days to 72 to 80 days to bloom and the fruit is four to five inches so um we're just gonna have to you know see these it's like a bell pepper type but we're just gonna have to grow them and see what they do this is a cubanelle sweet pepper cubanelle sweet pepper now this on this packet shows red i have a cubanelle sweet pepper that is green in my seed packet and truly the only difference i believe probably are you let this one go longer and it turns red. But if I let the cubanelles that I have that are green on the package, if I let them go longer on the plant, they would also turn red. So, um, you know, not real sure if they just took a picture of these more ripe or really what they did, but I liked the cubanelles. They were really, really good last year. Great snacking pepper. So I'm gonna grow more of them. And then the last one was a just a poblano. 
You can buy poblanos from the store, obviously. And I know a lot of these peppers you can grow, get from the store, but I feel like when you buy from like a big box store or Walmart, you're going to get um, peppers and tomatoes that you can usually get local around you. I really like to grow things that I can't get at the store, but like I said, this year I just didn't get my order into Baker Creek and I'm ready to start this stuff now. I have uh, pepper seeds from Baker Creek still, like a stack of them, so I'm not like hurting for Baker Creek seeds. I was just going to order some different kinds, but I'm not worried about it. Okay, these tomato seeds, honestly, I just feel like I'm kind of running low on my tomato stack, so I just wanted to pick some up to be sure I had enough, you know, that's what we got to do. This is called the tomato beefed up beef steak. So this is supposed to be like double the size, um, 90 days, nine, uh, this is uh, 90 days to harvest. Okay, something I want to tell you guys really quick is... Oh, this says up to two pound tomatoes, so interesting. Anyway, I do want to say there are two different types of tomato plants. There are indeterminate tomato plants and there are determinate. A determinate gets to a determined height, so it's, it stays short. Um, it's gonna, it grows more like a bush tomato. And an indeterminate tomato and a determinate tomato uh, produces a determined amount of fruit. So it gives you pretty much your whole harvest like at once. Kind of like the ever bearing and the June bearing strawberries um, is how I like to think about it. What I have found, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the determinate sized tom tomatoes that I, uh, in my experience, have been, thanks baby, have, have been paste tomatoes. So like aroma. Aroma tomato is in my, um, and the reason I believe that they make determined determinate tomatoes um, produce all at once and give you that harvest. Hey, 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 hey. Is so you can harvest all of them at once and make your sauce because you need a bunch to do your sauce. So like you have all your tomatoes come in at the same time instead of throughout the season. So if I had to guess this is an indeterminate tomato and if you guys notice this year when you are buying your seeds it doesn't tell you if they're indeterminate or determinate. You can Google it, and most of the time it'll tell you, but you'll be able to tell pretty quickly um, if they're indeterminate or determinate. Indeterminate tomatoes get really high. They grow, they can grow six, eight feet tall. They need continuous support unless you whop off the top of them, and then they'll kind of slow down on their height. But they will produce all season long, and you will get tomatoes from them constantly. The other thing is indeterminate tomatoes produce suckers. So out of the little armpit of the plant, it grows a stem, and this will be a whole nother tomato plant. This will also produce more fruit and give you more tomatoes. A lot of people cut them off. I like to cut them off at least halfway of my plant. Um, they cut them off to get bigger size fruit. And with determinate tomatoes, you're not going to cut those suckers off because the tomato only gives you a determined amount of fruit. So if you lop off those suckers, you are essentially lopping off half of your 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 crop so just be careful when doing that I can't tell you how many years I have been going through my garden pruning everything and I forget that you don't prune determinants and I whop off half my crop so anyway just a tip <laughs> this is the better boy hybrid tomato and I'm gonna tell you last year honestly whoop, 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 whoop. last year was the first year that I really grew a hybrid tomato like my husband picked out this hybrid tomato. It was called a big pink hybrid and it was beautiful. It produced great. Um, there is some difference between hybrids and heirlooms. Pretty big difference really, uh, but hybrids are not bad. The hybrids are not bad to have. You just really can't save the seeds from them. You can, but you're not going to get the same, uh, you're not going to get the same plant if you plant that seed next year it's not going to give you a better boy hybrid. Like it's going to give you a tomato of one of these parent plants. I'm not going to go into all that on this video. I have another video I'll link below that kind of goes over that stuff. But um, anyway, that's why I, I never really grew hybrids. Ooh, but honestly, I haven't been very good about saving seeds anyway. <laughs> I'm going to get better about it this year, but 
the, the hybrids that we grew last year were beautiful. So I went ahead and got this. This is the better boy. This is only a 70 to 75 day um, variety. So they come to fruition pretty quickly if you compare that to other tomatoes. This is the big boy hybrid and it comes to fruition in about 78 days. It produces, uh, it says it's one of the most popular hybrid tomatoes. The indeterminate plants produce large deep red slicing tomatoes. Some of them weigh up to two pounds. The tomatoes are great for salads, canning, or juice. Plants will produce until frost. And this says indeterminate. So that just, you know, some of them do, some of them don't. Let's see if this one does. No, this one doesn't say the other one. So, you know, it's hit or miss. Some, some do, some don't. Okay, the next one is the giant pink Belgium tomato. And this produces one to one and a half to three pound dark pink tomatoes. The meaty tomatoes have smooth skin and mild sweet flavor. So, so um, I'm excited about these. Let's see, careful. The big pink hybrid, okay, this is a giant pink Belgium. It doesn't say hybrid though. I wonder if this is a hybrid or an heirloom. I'll have to look that one up. Or if you know, let me know down in the comments. Okay, this is the early girl hybrid and a lot of times these will be started like in the stores and you'll see that they have big fruits on them like when we're about to plant all of our tomatoes outside and I thought about maybe trying to start some of these in some bigger uh, containers so we'll see. Um, true to her name, early girl hybrid takes first place as the earliest slicing tomato. Plants yield an early abundance of four to six ounce fruit so they're not just terribly big but it's still a tomato you know that really produces this 52 days to harvest you guys that is like a green bean that is insane I did not realize how fast these came to fruition Wow. oh yeah we're planting these we're doing it all right my next one is a Rutger I haven't grown these in years I don't think I didn't grow these last year no I haven't grown these in years but I have grown them in the past and they produced they're a determinate variety they're not uh, they don't get really tall they're more of a paste tomato hold on a minute this says indeterminate am i thinking of a different tomato that was determinate productive large attractive fruits with thick solid flesh superior flavor delicious in salads unsurpassed for home canning indeterminate maybe i'm thinking i'm thinking of a different unicorn i'm thinking of a different tomato that was a determinate size but this is a paste tomato and it's a rucker and it was really good and this is an heirloom seed so uh, 75 days to harvest I cannot believe how early that's an early girl is oh we didn't look at these when the, the big boy hybrid is 78 days and the better boy is 70 to 75 our next tomato is the big rainbow tomato and this gives you about 16 ounce fruit 85 days to harvest I've never grown this one, but it sounded interesting, and it's an it does in this packet say indeterminate or vining. Our next one is the brandy wine pink. Now I've heard of a brandy wine. I've never grown a brandy wine. I know a lot of people are super big fans and always grow brandy wines. I have never grown one. This is the brandy wine pink. It's not regular. I have never grown the brandy wine, so I'm interested to see this year. Um, also, if you know down in the comments if this brandy wine pink and just a regular brandy wine, what if there's a big difference in flavor? This is also indeterminate. 78 days to harvest and 14 to 16 ounce fruit, so about a pound. And then I got the Cherokee purple, the famous Cherokee purple. So very interesting story about this. Before years, years before. When I say years and years, I'm talking like I'm talking six to eight years before. I ever knew I was going to live in the home that I live in now. I came through town and I seen a, I lived about 30 miles um, north of where I live now. And I had came through town and I seen a sign that said plant sale. And I was like, well, yeah, I have to stop at the plant sale. So I drove around and I came to this house and she had white card tables set up all in the driveway and she had tons and tons of plants started um and i bought a cherokee purple from her and i remember that so vividly like and i just feel like a cherokee purple kind of i don't know i just it was it was, it was cool to me to think back when i had like you never know where you're going to end up and that i had bought 
tomato start from her that lived in this house six to eight years before. It was just wild to me. So anyway, I always dedicate and grow Cherokee Purple Tomatoes. Plus, they are delicious in flavor. The last tomato we're growing. But no, not the last tomato we're growing. The last tomato packet I picked up and bought today is the Tomato Sweetie. And this is a cherry tomato. Well, it says it's a sweet bite-sized tomato. They're high in vitamins A and C and go great in salads. It can be served on toothpicks as appetizers. The tall indeterminate vines that provide a bountiful harvest all season. And I have heard really good things about the Sweetie. I've heard really good things about the Sweeties. I've heard that people absolutely love them. And to be completely honest with you, this is so terrible of me, but I've never grown a red cherry tomato. Yeah, that's right. I just said that on the very end of the video. But I've never grown a red cherry tomato. I've always grown like yellows, the blue cream berries, the um, black strawberries, like yeah, lots lots of yellows, like yellow Isis, Sunrise Bumblebee. And so I wanted to have red cherry tomato because that is like traditional cherry tomatoes, you know, like the red. So I wanted to have that in my bowl. Anyway, you guys, that's the end of our Walmart garden haul video, and I really appreciate you guys watching to the end. If you like this kind of stuff, this kind of content, share it with a friend, share it with a garden friend, like, subscribe, comment down below. I would love to know where you are, where you're gardening, and from one gardener to another, see you guys in the next one. Bye.